Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Kanekura Show, where I always have to do the duty of deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And if you ever wanted to play a video game that stars a rapping dog so dated he's practically a fossil, then Japan had you covered with 1996's Parappa the Rapper on the PlayStation. Is it Parappa or is it Parappa? We may never know. But who cares when you have lyrics in your game like this? I've been working here since my mama was a baby. Yeah, that's fucking vile. Developed by the previously discussed the creators of Vib Ribbon. <laughs> Parappa the Rapper was one of the earliest modern rhythm games ever released, as in the DDR and Guitar Hero style of game, pressing buttons in the right sequence and timing alongside pre-selected songs. And boy does it show. I mean, back in the day, Parappa was a groundbreaking hit for the PS1, so much so that there were spin-offs, a sequel, a Japanese anime, a remake for the PSP of all things, an appearance in PS All Stars, and even stickers released for DualShock 4 light bars that quote the first song from the game. You know you've made it when you can say that. <laughs> All that time ago, it was highly critically acclaimed for, well, everything. The unbelievably brilliant, unique art style by Rodney Greenblatt morphed into a series of blocky 3D and literal paper-thin flat characters, but still brimming and heaping with charm and details that make the entire visual style and characters unforgettable, and the highly innovative gameplay style forged by Masaya Mutsura, a musician and music producer who took his talents and merged them into the video game industry, which combined his game design knowledge and music together to create a steamrolled chicken that screams at you. So, obviously, it was destined to be a hit from the second it left the starting gate. How could it not be? And it became yet another staple of obscure yet creative exclusive titles that PlayStation owners would come to expect and love. But that just isn't enough. I've already got a PS4 right down there, and I've even got a PS4 Pro in the living room. I mean, I don't want new games for them. Nothing new. So can we remaster Parappa the Rapper, please? with the same exact flat characters in 4K. Oh yes, fuck me, I'm so take my money! Yeah, today we'll be using footage from the beautiful, is that the right word? Um, PS4 version of Parappa the Rapper released very recently, and I do have a few issues with it that I'll discuss at the end of this silly video, but for now, let's just talk about the game as it is because I've neglected it for far too long. When I was very little, I also used to call this game Pappy Rappy. So that's his name from now on, okay? Pappy Rappy follows the fairy tale story of a flat cartoon dog living in a blocky world that conveniently looks exactly like early PS1 3D textures, and he has three friends Katie Cat, PJ Berry, and The Girl of My Dreams, Sunny Funny. Boy, she sure is beautiful today. Oh, yes, he also has the hots for her. A dog wearing a tank top and a bright orange beanie is madly in love with a flower with a face. Japan, we love you! And that's literally all the story is. Nice and simple, yet deliriously entertaining from how it's written and the self-aware ridiculous nonsense going on. And by the power of wrapping his little horny heart out, you need to help Pappy Rappy either impress or make himself a bigger and better person in his own head for his one true love, and play through six original songs as he wants to defend Sunny against bullies so learns karate from an onion. Don't ask. Wants to drive her around and so gets driving lessons from a moose named after an Italian dictator. Don't ask. Crashes the car and so needs to pay off the damage and sells stuff at a flea market with a Rastafarian frog. Don't ask. Then wants to bake a cake for her after accidentally wrecking the cake he got her for her birthday, so learns how to do it from a famous TV chef who just so happens to be a fucking chicken who loves seafood cake. Don't ask. Then he eats way too much at the following birthday party and nearly shits his pants. Yes, shits his pants. And so needs to rap battle his way towards the only toilet in the whole fucking city. Still don't ask. And finally ends up live on stage rapping his little horny heart out until he finally wins the day. By the way, he raps with this thing. I don't even know what that is, but what I can say is that I think Grimace should go back to stealing milkshakes. Yes, this is stupid. It's so, so stupid. But, I mean, even by me just explaining the entire story and showing you a few bits of footage, you can tell how enjoyable it is. It's weird, wacky, and totally wonderful. And some of my favorite parts include Sonny preferring Pappy Rappy as a person when he's desperate to take a dump. Parappa looks so manly today. <laughs> When PJ tries describing another character's new car. The maximum speed is tuned up to 463,200. When Pappy Rappy arrives in his new car. Hi. 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 The fact that Sonny's dad is a Christ almighty plant pot which raises way too many unsettling questions. Did he literally give birth to his daughter from his head? And of course my favourite bit, the stupid ass montage sequence of Pappy taking Sonny out to a club. And the musical accompaniment in this sequence is so bloody dreadful I can barely listen to it, but it's cringingly perfect. We can go almost And 
I can't forget another favorite bit for me every single time that this guy appears. There's no need to fear. Because Joe Chin is here. Joe Chin is the best, and he's practically the sole reason Pappy ends up in his rapping situations in the first place when he learns karate and drives a car for the first time. As every single time Pappy tries to get Sonny's attention, this prick comes along and steals all the thunder, boasts about how amazing and rich and strong he is, and literally defeats bullies by talking them to death. He even wrecks the cake that you got for Sonny's birthday, which makes stage four happen. All of that, and he's like a mixture between Gaston and the Crimson Chin. Not a favorite thing of mine, though, is some of the slang in the game. It's a bit, you know. Man, it's fat. Oh yeah, dude, it's totally gnarly and bodacious and rad. Oh, and let's not forget about that catchphrase. Whenever Pappy Rappy has a problem he needs to deal with or has something new he wants to do, what does he say he has to do? Yeah, I know. I gotta believe. <laughs> He says this for every damn stage in the cutscenes, and the ending song even makes you shout it out in the gameplay. You gotta do one. I gotta believe. Well, you know, you only say that part of the song after you say this line. I gotta believe. <laughs> but you know, it's great to hear that if you ever have any problem in life, then all you need to know is you gotta believe. Office needs cleaning. I gotta believe. Want to quit from your highly successful job and leave your family in crippling debt as you make your own feature film? I gotta I'm leaving you. I gotta believe! <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that montage song before stage six isn't the only song with absolute trash substituting the lyrics. Every single song here is written bloody awfully. Don't get me wrong, the actual music is brilliant. Every single stage has a totally different mood depending on the situation you're in with incredibly layered drum loops to get your feet tapping. And the instrumental backing is perfect. I can't, there's no other word for it. Like with Mussolini's rap's piano phrases. And even the trippy organs and heavy bass lines of the stomach trouble rap. Kick, punch, punch, and chop the door. Kick, punch, turn, and tap the door. They aren't only pure ear sugar, but like I said, match the situation depending on what is going on really well and incorporate the correct sound effects and everything to make every track just, well, classic. But that does not mean the lyrics aren't still dreadful. Uh oh, uh oh, here comes the dude, and now he's running up and down the street with the Jews. I don't know if it was a translation issue from the Japanese to the English version, or if it's intentionally bland and not even slightly witty or clever, but either way, I can't help but be bothered a little bit with how solidly flat, no pun intended, some of these lines are. The rhymes are often way too simple and most of the lyrics just close off the bars of music like a fucking thud, like a brick to the face, just a smack, a smack, you know, there's a huge lack of flow. I see you a few times a day, you never do look my way. I am a chicken from the kitchen and I am kidding, although nothing is written. Just to please this but then again, it may be intentional. I mean, there's a rap about crapping yourself in the car, so that could be an invalid point. My car tank is empty, but mine is full. I mean, I mean I'm full of gas and not the car. I, no, the car needs gas, but I, I... Not to mention, I know every single word to every single song because of how memorably bad it is, I guess. So maybe it was intentional, I don't know. And hey, if the music itself in a rhythm game is so good that even the menu beat is groovy as fuck, isn't that the most important thing? The gameplay as well is incredibly quirky. I mean, it is just rhythm-based gameplay. What you see here is what you get, but it has a couple of really awesome and definitely innovative ideas, especially for being one of the earliest games of its kind. On Mussolini's stage, for instance, I do love how in this lyric, when I say boom, 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 you say bam, 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 no pause in between, come on, let's check. It gives you instant information that the next few lines will give you no gaps at all for your response. But then of course, it does this quick response thing with no warning at all, and unless you know it's coming, it will fuck you up. Yeah. Most of the time though the gameplay is very fun, get into the grooves and tap the correct buttons to make Pappy Rappy actually rap with your inputs and enjoy the ride. Depending on how well you do, you have a rating meter. And another good thing is that the worse you do, not only does the environment around you change, but there are also different animations and musical backing depending on how bad you do. That's ingenious and it makes you feel all the better for keeping up into the good rating or, god forbid, 
cool rating. One of the best things about Pappy Rappy is that you are the one indeed that makes Pappy rap along with your button input. Every single button in each bar of the music is dedicated to a particular word or sentence. You're not just pressing buttons in time with a pre-recorded song. You have to make the pre-recorded song sound decent. So clearly, what do you do when you finish the story mode and replay the game again, wondering how to get that cool rating that was initially locked out to you? You, you tap, tap buttons, buttons everywhere. everywhere! All the time, every second, as fast as you can. Just tap buttons, and if you tap in specific rhythms that the game likes in the stages, you elevate into cool status, where the teacher leaves you and you have to freestyle. And I'm sure you can imagine what the results of that are. Put cake in the oven for a while. Put cake in the oven for a while. Put cake in the oven for a while. I will try to sell a cat like this. I will try to sell a cat like this. Kick, punch, 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 pun
let's be real. What difference would 4K really make to this game? It looks great enough in 1080p, but I'd much rather have more options for syncing with HDTV lag and stuff. It'll make some of your failures feel just a little bit fairer. And considering I managed to finish the entire game 100% and even platinum trophied it within 90 minutes, I just wish it was a little cheaper. You don't even get any extra bonuses for 100% completion. You get the exact same pointless and limp dancing thing with Sonny and Katie from the PS1 game and... That's it. Change their dances, change their outfits, move the camera around, listen to the music. That's, that's all you do. And you get to look at these faces. But at the same time, that little ending part of the video there, that's just more a brief synopsis on the remaster specifically, because as for Parappa the Rapper himself, the game is a classic. There's no other words for it. Yeah, it's really choppy and outright arguably bad in a good few places, but at the same time, you have to forgive it for a few things because it was one of the first games of its time to do the things it was doing and it not only experimented with these brand new things but also managed to bullseye quite a lot of them. And it's also one of those games from a presentational standpoint that imprints every single aspect of it onto your hippocampus and never ever 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 leaves it. The next question really though is, we got a remaster of this, how about Vib Ribbon next, huh? I mean think about it. We could add a few more of those incredibly insane Japanese songs into the campaign mode of the game, or not, it's alright, because what we could also do is maybe put some sort of MP3 upload feature, maybe put a USB drive into the PS4 and be able to play any of our songs on the stick, or maybe even better, partner up with some sort of online music streaming service so that you can just go on the game and pick a song and play along with it on the game, big rhythm, yeah? Give me a call, Sony. I think we can work something out. But don't call me just yet, because Pappy Rappy gets the salvage. Lovely. And until next time, if it's your birthday today watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. You gotta do what? I gotta check out thepixelempire.com! I'm really sorry that was fucking terrible. But seriously, stay tuned for the outtakes because first I'd love to thank the Pixel Empire who are the sponsors for today's video and not only sell hundreds of incredibly stylish video game war prints and phone cases, but also house all of my merchandise. Yes, all of it, exclusively on the site. And currently all is t-shirts and hoodies in loads of sizes and colour choices. And if you want to be a little puppy rappy yourself, you can even get them in tag tops. <laughs> also in the description is a link to a very special competition where five of you can win a $50 gift card to spend on whatever you want at the Pixel Empire. Empire.com. All of the terms and conditions and all of the instructions will be there for you all to have a go with, so good luck to you all. The site also ships internationally, and if you ever wanted to wear something on your chest to express your desire to slaughter or salvage, ask people if they have any milk, or even let everyone know how much you love that silly noise that the ships in Wipeout 2097 make when they smack against a wall. Donk! Why donk? Donk! 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 Yeah, it's a bit specific. Then head straight to the description and check out the site. And if you click on that link in the description, it will also automatically apply a special caddy discount. Thanks so much for listening and enjoy the outtakes, everybody. Subscribe. Gotta believe. Gotta believe. Yes. In a good few many. In a good many. In a good few. In good, good, good few. Who wants to see the aftermath of the broken foot Me. after it's out of the cast? Hey! Oh.